Good day, good day. How is everyone doing out there on the internet or out there in whatever country you are in? It's nice to be here. I'm just going to do my normal checks and double checks to make sure everything's working. I don't want to make a mistake this morning. So, we'll be starting in about 20 seconds. Everything sounds like it's working well. The video is working well. We will do this lesson on mistakes in just a bit. Uh in about 10 seconds. Let me check one other thing uh before we get started. I think we're good though. I think we're good to go. Well, hello and welcome to this English lesson about mistakes. We all make mistakes in life. I sometimes make mistakes when I'm really tired. I sometimes make mistakes when I'm not thinking clearly. Sometimes when I have a really long day and I'm exhausted at the end of the day. Sometimes I make mistakes. This is not going to be a lesson about mistakes people make when speaking English though. This is going to be a lesson about mistakes that people make as they go through their day. The typical mistakes that you might make in the same situations that I just mentioned. When you're tired, when you're exhausted, when you're overworked, you tend to make more mistakes. So, I'm eager to do this English lesson with you and I think you'll learn a lot of new words and phrases uh, that you could use to talk about the mistakes you make or the mistakes that you see other people make. So, welcome to this English lesson about mistakes. Before we get started, I do wanna mention that there are no April Fool's jokes during this lesson. It is April 1st here in Canada and sometimes people do little tricks or pranks or jokes. There will be no pranks or jokes during this lesson. Bob the Canadian is all business. I'm a very serious teacher. No jokes allowed. But you might as you go through your day depending on where you live uh, have a funny day or maybe you've already had a funny morning because it's April the 1st. It's April Fool's Day. Hey, uh do remember that as you watch this lesson, have good English conversations in the chat. If you do have a question, please use the form. It's linked below. It's also uh in the chat every once in a while. Use the form to ask a question about the lesson and I will be happy to answer it. Uh so far, I haven't made any mistakes. So, that's pretty good but I do wanna say hi to uh some people. Hi to Roni and RAF and Rod, the English teacher is here. Sam the Taiwanese, Apple the Frog, Dave the Canadian and Todd the Canadian are here. Uh no Nick user, Audi Tai, Eva is here, Marlin, Lolly Lolly, Linda. If I scroll back, who else do I see? Patana, Wanda Pot, Prado, Audi the Tai, Freddie Wolf. I see Jin and Apple the Frog. I think I'm saying names twice. Tony is here. Speak English with this guy. Uh, says, I'm an expert in mistakes. I think we all are at a certain point in our lives, aren't we? Anyways, Key Park, I see you in there too. It's good to see all of you and it's good to be here for this lesson. Should we get it started? I think we should. I think it would be a mistake for me if I kept talking for longer. I think we should start the lesson. So, first of all, when we talk about mistakes, we almost always use the phrase to make a mistake. When you're writing a test, maybe you're writing an English test, sometimes you make a mistake. Um sometimes when you're talking in the past tense, you'll say, oh, yesterday I made a mistake. Um so, generally, when we talk about mistakes, we use the verb to make. I don't make a lot of mistakes um but I usually (laughs) double check everything I do, especially my videos, I always check for mistakes because if I make a mistake in an English lesson and put it on YouTube, that's a bad thing. Teachers shouldn't make mistakes but generally, this is the phrasing we would use. Not all the time as you'll see as we go through the lesson. So, a common mistake when people are going somewhere is to make a wrong turn but we also use the verb take here. You can take a wrong turn. You could say something like, oh, sorry I'm late but um I took a wrong turn or I made a wrong turn. Um I had directions on how to get here but for some reason, I took a wrong turn or I made a wrong turn. Uh when you do this when you're driving, it means you get lost but sometimes you just make a mistake. You make a wrong turn. Um this doesn't happen as much as it used to because a lot of people now use GPS. GPS is on your phone and it lets you um find a place a lot easier but common mistake is to make a wrong turn or take a wrong turn. 
And then this is not how you spell error. I was worried that if I put a word on the screen that was a spelling mistake, people would think or they would misinterpret it but that is intentionally wrong. Error is spelled E-R-R-O-R but a spelling mistake is when you spell a word wrong. When I was a kid in school, we would have spelling tests and I would make some spelling mistakes when I took my spelling test. When you take an English test, quite often you will make spelling mistakes when you write the test and then the teacher will take points off. You will lose points for making a spelling mistake. <laughs> Mistaken identity. So, this is the formal term for when the police or someone else thinks you're someone who you aren't. It doesn't make a lot of sense. Let me re-explain. My brother, my younger brother has the same voice as me and my younger brother looks a lot like me. So, sometimes people think he's me or they think I'm him and it's kind of like a funny case of mistaken identity. Luckily, my brother is not a criminal. (laughs) My brother is an upstanding citizen. So, I've never had the police come here looking for my brother And because of of a case of mistaken identity, think that I was him. But that's not my brother by the way. That that's actually me. But when the police or the government or someone official thinks you're someone else, we would call it mistaken identity. When we do it, when I do it in the classroom or just in life, we usually say it's calling someone the wrong name. Sometimes you call someone the wrong name. Uh, In class, when students raise their hand to answer a question, I always make sure I use their name. I have called people the wrong name before. As a teacher, it's not very nice Um, and I know someone was mentioning earlier in the chat that they called someone by the wrong name and uh, that's just not a nice mistake to make for the other person and it's embarrassing for you as well. So, there's a phrase in English to double book yourself. Now, this is a mistake that people make sometimes where they agree to do something on a certain day and time and then they agree to do something else on that day and time and then when that day arrives, they realize that they double booked themselves. When you double book yourself, it means you plan to do two things during the same time on the same day and it's a mistake. You thought that you had nothing going on that day but you put two things at 11 a.m. on April 30th and now on the day, you realize that you double booked yourself. Never a good thing to double book yourself. Uh, It can result in frantically calling someone to say you can't make an appointment because you have two appointments to go to. Losing track of time. This happens to me sometimes. But I'm usually fairly good with time. But when you lose track of time, uh, when uh, you forget what time it is, especially when you need to be somewhere, this is a mistake. Um, I know there are some people I work with who very easily lose track of time um, and they come to meetings late or they um, they just, I don't wanna say too much but some some people are very timely and some people Uh, lose track of time very easily. When you lose track of time, again, it means you just forget what time it is. So, let's say you needed to be at your sister's house for dinner at six o'clock and then all of a sudden, you realize that it's five after six. We would say that you lost track of time. You made a mistake and you lost track of time. So, as I was making this lesson, I thought Sleeping in isn't really a mistake. Sleeping in is just something that sometimes you choose to do, sometimes you do by accident but forgetting to set your alarm the night before, I would consider a mistake. When you go to bed, if you need to get up at six or six thirty or seven, you want to make sure that you set your alarm. Forgetting to set your alarm will mean that you will probably be late for something the next day. So, for me, Every Sunday, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday night, I set my alarm. On Friday night and Saturday night, I don't but if I was to forget to set my alarm uh, during those days, then I would probably be late for work. That would not be a good thing. So, forgetting to set your alarm is another (laughs) a common mistake that some people make. Um, I don't make it very often 
Um it's nice though because Jen and I both set alarms. So, that makes it a little easier. Burning something. So, when you bake something or when you cook something, you need to bake or cook it for a certain amount of time. And sometimes if you forget to set a timer or if you just forget about it, maybe you lose track of time, you might burn something, okay? So, maybe you make some cookies and you put them in the oven and you need to set the timer for 12 minutes and you don't. And then all of a sudden you smell you smell something burning. You run to the kitchen and then you realize that uh you burnt something. So, burning something uh is another thing uh another mistake that people sometimes make. They lose track of time when they're cooking something um and then uh and then uh, it gets burnt or overcooked. Forgetting to lock something. So, there are a number of things in life that you want to lock. When you go out, you lock your house. When you go to the grocery store, if you drive there, you lock your car and sometimes you forget to lock something. It's not always a mistake but it can be very very um annoying to come out of the grocery store and realize you left your car unlocked and maybe somebody stole something from your car. So, forgetting to lock something is another common mistake people make. They forget to lock their house. Maybe they go on a vacation uh and when they get to their destination, they realize they forgot to lock their house or they forgot to lock their apartment. So, another common mistake that people make is forgetting to lock something. Hey, let's look at some questions everybody. I know that uh in the chat, people are having some good conversations about mistakes. For me, mistakes are fun to talk about because usually mistakes are small and it's not too big of a deal um but uh I I do find there's lots of humor in making mistakes sometimes as long as they're little mistakes. Ruslan has the first question. Hello, dear teacher Bob. Have you ever called a girl by the wrong name? I did it once in college. She has never talked to me since. No. Well, in terms of people, yes, I've called people by their wrong name a, a few times in the past. Specifically, a girl, no. Um but I can see in your situation why she might have been annoyed. When people call you by the wrong name, it can be a little bit annoying. Uh from Azam. Hi, teacher. Just wanna say happy new Iranian aka Persian New Year. Thank you. That starts uh the first day of spring. Very cool. Thank you for those well wishes. Yaroslav. Morning, the wisest teacher, Bob. Hope you are doing great. How do you deal with making mistakes when learning French? Take care. So, that's a tricky one because I don't always realize if I made a mistake. So, I do like my French friend who I talk to each week to correct me if I make a mistake. Um that's really the only way for me to get better at French. We sometimes talk for 15 minutes without correcting mistakes and then we spend a little bit more time talking where we do uh try a little better to correct mistakes. Although, lately, we usually just talk. I'm sure I'm making lots of mistakes and my friend is not correcting me. Uh let's see here from Cater. There's no questions. Just greet you. Wish you a happy new month. Well, thank you very much. I what was I was gonna say happy April Fool's Day. We don't say that in English. Um Musa says, hi, Bob. Just saying hello. I hope you're healthy. I am. Although this past Tuesday, I had a cold and the funny thing with that was Because we've been wearing masks at work, I haven't been sick for over two years. I haven't had a cold or a flu. Um and then Tuesday, I had a cold but I think it's because we stopped wearing masks at school. So, I think I got a cold. Sorry, I said I haven't been sick. I did have COVID a couple months ago but uh let's see here. Um this is not related but I'll Answer it. Felipe, hey Bob, how's it going? I hope you're doing just great. I got a quick question. Is there a difference between scoot and scooch? Thanks. These are both informal words we use. Like if I'm gonna sit somewhere and there's not enough room, I might say, hey, can you scoot over or can you scooch over? Um both mean uh you're asking a person to move a little bit or you're asking people to sit closer together so that you will fit in. Uh let's see here. From Ario. Hi, Ario. 
Of course, all of us make mistakes sometimes, made mistakes sometimes. However, we should be patient um to hear the word no when we need people's help. Wish my late papa were still here. Yes. So, definitely patience and mistakes are kind of two two parts of the same coin, right? When people make mistakes, it's always a good idea, I think, to be patient with them. Winter Wright says, Hi, Bob. Is there any idiom which describes people who make the same mistake many times? Thanks a lot. Have a nice day. We would call the person clumsy. Um I think I don't think this is an English word. I think this is because my parents were Dutch but we use the word klutz. Uh, but clumsy would be the right word. Um or all thumbs. When someone makes a lot of mistakes at work, you might say they are all thumbs. Ev Jenny, hello, mister Bob. Have you ever experienced that GPS navigator led you to a wrong place? Yes. Early on when it was first invented, uh, I had a GPS. It wasn't on my phone. I had an actual device and it was often wrong. It was it was kind of annoying because the whole reason for having it was to help me get places and it would make mistakes all the time. Um let's see here. Next question from Sukena. Good afternoon, teacher Bob. Have you ever been pranked? Happy April Fool's Day. Yes, I think so. I know one time on April Fool's Day, I hope none of my students are listening now. I went to class and my students had put all of their desks outside the classroom and they had put them all in the same order and they were all sitting outside the window in their desks uh pretending to work. So, that was I thought that was a good prank. That was pretty cool. Uh I laughed and then I made them all bring their desks back in. Let's see here. Tina says, hello. Is talking to ourselves beneficial to improve our speaking skills? After all, this way we make a lot of mistakes and there is no one to correct them. So, I think speaking out loud like reading something out loud or shadowing someone. So, listening to an English speaker and saying the same words. Both of those are great ways to improve your English and at the same time avoid making mistakes. The best way to um become a better English speaker and to have your mistakes corrected is to find an English tutor using Preply or another website. That's what I would recommend so that they can correct you. Um from Apple the Frog. See, I can read any even when you just use emojis, I can read. <laughs> Hi, Bob. How are you? My question is, have you ever done mistakes? Thank you for answering. Yes, I've definitely done mistakes. On the farm, I've made some mistakes. I once was driving in the field with my tractor and I had a piece of equipment behind me and I drove into the fence in the field and I wrecked the equipment. So, yes, I have definitely uh done some things where I have made mistakes uh for sure. Okay, let me just do an audio check and we are going to get back to the lesson. Um and I do wanna say to the 365 people watching, first of all, welcome. Uh it's great to have you here. Uh if you're not a subscriber, there is a subscribe button here or down below. It's usually red. Um if you click it, you'll get notified when I do new English lessons which I do a couple times a week. Uh and you can click the bell too. I think that helps you get notified. Uh let me just get back here to actually let me just go back here. Um let's see here. I was just reading the chat. Um sorry to pause here sometimes. <laughs> it's fun to read the chat. Anyways, let me go back to the lesson. We were talking about forgetting something or forgetting to lock something. Now, there's also the mistake of locking your keys in your car. Now, this actually happened recently uh to someone in my family. I won't say who. It's not nice to say but sometimes you start your vehicle in a cold climate like Canada. You often start your vehicle three or four minutes before you go somewhere and when you do that, you can accidentally lock your car and then your car is running with the keys in it and you can't get in. Um sometimes people lock their keys in their car at other times of year. I know we had it once where when our kids were really little, 
Uh, we let our one son play with the keys. So, once I put him in his car seat in the car and then I cl- I gave him my keys to play with and I closed the door and he, he I think he was only three. He locked the the vehicle and I didn't have the other set of keys. Jen was gone with her keys. So, sometimes you lock your keys in your car. Everything ended okay though. Jen came home with the keys. Uh leaving something on top of your car. So, <laughs> Uh one time I was driving and I was in a parking lot and a car was coming towards me and the person had a cup of coffee or a cup of coke or something on top of their car and so I waved to them like I was like stop and then they hit their brakes but then it just fell and spilled all over the hood of their car. Uh I remember a couple of my kids laughing a bit but that was a mistake that that person made. They came to their car They probably were carrying a lot of stuff so they put their coffee on the car, unlocked their car, forgot about the coffee and then drove away with it. Um drinking or biting something hot. So, sometimes you burn your tongue. Sometimes you get a cup of tea and the tea is really hot. This tea isn't by the way. And you take a sip and then you're like, ah, I burned my tongue. Uh it doesn't happen as much with hot food but it can. I know sometimes when I bite into pizza, the sauce on the pizza is still really really hot and sometimes I burn my tongue. So, another mistake that people make uh sometimes is to uh drink, take a sip or drink something that's too hot or biting food that's too hot and then they burn their tongue. And sometimes you bite your tongue. Um when you chew food, <laughs> I don't know why this happens but about once a year or so, I'm I'm eating and I'm chewing and then I accidentally bite my tongue. Sometimes, I bite my tongue really hard and it hurts um but this is a mistake that doesn't happen very often but I'm sure you bite your tongue once every few years. Um maybe you're eating really fast. Maybe you're really hungry so you're eating really fast. Uh and then you accidentally uh bite your tongue. Never a good feeling um especially if you bite your tongue really hard. It's never a good feeling and then uh you spend the rest of the day thinking, why did I do that? Why did I uh make that mistake? Wearing your shirt inside out. Now, this can happen with other articles of clothing but sometimes people accidentally wear their shirt inside out. So, it's not necessarily a mistake. It's more of a it's more like a bit of forgetfulness but I guess you could say that he made a mistake yesterday. He wore his shirt inside out the whole day. You can tell this shirt is inside out because the writing that's usually on the back of the shirt is usually inside but uh this person is wearing the shirt inside out so you can see the writing Uh, on the outside of the shirt. So, another mistake that people sometimes make is they wear a shirt inside out. I have never done this um when I go to work because the shirts I have, I would be able to tell if they're inside out uh but uh I have done this around the house. Usually, when you put a t-shirt on, sometimes it's easy to accidentally uh wear it inside out. This is something that can only happen one way in Canada and that's when you put gas in a diesel vehicle and then the phrase or vice versa means the reverse, putting diesel in a gas vehicle. So, we have different names but in Canada, we have gas and we have diesel. Gasoline and diesel. Uh in other English speaking countries, it might be petrol, it might be fuel um but here in Canada, we say gas and diesel. A gas vehicle cannot use diesel and a diesel vehicle cannot use gas. So, in Canada, the nozzles are actually different sizes. So, you can accidentally put gas in a diesel vehicle but you can't actually get the diesel nozzle in a gas vehicle. So, at least that's the case and you might think that this never happens. Who would make this mistake? But I've actually heard in my life twice where I know someone has put gas in a diesel vehicle and it's not good. 
the engine stops running, there's major problems and huge repair costs. So, always put the right fuel in your vehicle. Put gas in a gas vehicle and diesel in a diesel vehicle. Um driving into the curb. I couldn't find a good picture of this. By the way, I'm not sure if the dog's actually driving the car. Um but sometimes when I pull into a parking space, I drive too far forward and the front of my vehicle scrapes against the curb. Have you ever done that? Where you drive into a parking spot and then there's a curb and you just hear crunch because you you drove too far forward. Th- this is probably a bad example of this but um definitely uh when you drive into a parking lot and when you drive into a curb that is not a nice mistake and you're immediately aware you made a mistake by the sound your car makes scraping against the curb. Leaving something on. So, this is similar I guess to um well, not burning something but this is like if you go somewhere, sometimes when Jen and I are driving, we'll say, oh, did you turn the oven off or did you turn the stove off? Like maybe you fry some eggs on the stove and then you forget to turn it off. Um a long time ago when Jen used a curling iron more, sometimes we'd be driving and Jen would say, oh, I think I left the curling iron on. So, when you leave something on, it means it's um you didn't turn it off. So, you forgot to turn off the stove. You forgot to turn off the oven. You forgot to turn off the curling iron. These are really bad mistakes because if you leave something on like a stove uh or a curling iron, you could accidentally start a fire in your house. That would not be a good thing. Uh forgetting to water a house plant. I don't know why. I think I'm laughing because this is something I have done a lot. I am not good at taking care of plants. When I buy house plants, I forget to water them. When you forget to water a house plant, when you make this mistake, they die. That that's just how it works. If you buy a house plant and you put it in your window and you water it once and then a couple months later, you look at it and you realize that you haven't watered it. That is a bad mistake because it will look like this. It will have died. So, definitely uh forgetting to water a house plant is a mistake. That that has a sad result if you make that mistake for sure. Uh forgetting to call someone on their birthday. So, when you have a birthday, it's nice if people give you a phone call. It's nicer if they visit but generally, it's nice to get a phone call. It's nice when um on my birthday, my mom calls me um but sometimes, you forget to call someone on their birthday. Forgetting to call someone on their birthday is not a very nice mistake to make. Um my mom's birthday is coming up in a few months. I will absolutely phone her on her birthday. In fact, I will most likely go see her um but uh forgetting to call my mom on her birthday would be a really bad mistake. People like it when you call them on their birthday. It's just a nice feeling when someone um calls and says happy birthday to you. Uh forgetting to put on sunscreen. So, if you are a person that tans and burns uh and not everyone does but if you are someone with fair skin who if you go out in the sun for too long without sunscreen on or suntan lotion, um you burn. Forgetting to put on sunscreen is a huge mistake. Jen and I on the farm uh regularly wear sunscreen. Um when you work outside for a number of hours on our farm uh and when you are uh of my complexion, the sun is dangerous. So, if I forget to put on sunscreen, I look like this and it hurts. A sunburn is not a nice thing to have and it's one of the worst mistakes forgetting to put on sunscreen. It's such a simple thing. It takes like one minute to put sunscreen on and if you forget and then a few hours go by, then you're like, oh, this really hurts. The worst is when you get a sunburn on your ears or on your nose. For me, that's what hurts the most but definitely uh forgetting to put on sunscreen uh is a mistake that you don't want to make if you're someone who burns easily. 
texting the wrong person. We talked about this a few a couple months ago. I think it, I did a lesson on when things go wrong or something like that but certainly especially if you're texting something mean and then you're like, I don't like you. Send and then you realize that you made a mistake that you sent it to the wrong person. So, let's say let's say there was someone who I didn't like and I was texting them, you know, I don't wanna hang out with you anymore. You're mean. That's not a very nice text but and then if I hit send and then realize I sent it to my mom, that would be a bad mistake. I would quickly call my mom and say, that wasn't meant for you. Sorry, sorry. But texting the wrong person, um it's an easy thing to do uh in the world we currently live in. It's very easy to make a mistake when you're quickly sending messages to people. Um but definitely uh not a good mistake to make when you text the wrong person. Hey folks, we're gonna jump to members only chat. As I set that up, I want to remind everyone that the lesson isn't over. Uh we will be in about 10 minutes, we'll be going back to the lesson. Uh so, do stick around if you are hanging out and you want to hear the answers to some of the questions. I am going to look at questions that have been submitted as well. Um but I've noticed there's about 443 people watching. I've noticed when I do members only chat, people sometimes think the lesson is over but it's not. I have about 10 more slides of mistakes coming up. Uh so, let's do that in a bit. If you're a member, thank you so much. Uh if you are interested in becoming a member, there's a link below that will explain it to you. I think it says join or a button below. Um but members can ask questions directly in the chat and I will answer questions over here as well. I don't know if I can answer this one, Tran. Hi, sir. What to say after making my girlfriend angry? Well, apologize for whatever you did um and just kind of explain why it happened. Maybe promise that it won't happen again but definitely saying I'm sorry would be a really, really good start. Um but again, I don't know what happened to make your girlfriend angry. So, it's a tricky question for sure. Uh, hey, I need to check my audio for a sec here. Excellent. Everything's good. Okay. Let me see here. In the chat, we have from Yaroslav. Yaroslav, I know phrases by mistake and learning from mistake. Could you please suggest any others? Thanks. So, phrases about mistakes. Yeah. I don't know a lot of traditional phrases but I do know that the only way to learn is to make mistakes. That's not a common phrase but it's something that I do tell students a lot when they're learning a language. Um I also think that when you are making mistakes learning a language, it shows that you're doing the work. If you are just doing things and never making mistakes, you need to do harder work when learning a language. Hopefully, that helps you, Aroslav. Sam the Taiwanese, hello, teacher Bob. If you had a time machine, what mistakes you've made that you want to retrieve most or to redo or go back and avoid? I don't know. I'm a believer that today I am happy. So, the mistakes of the past are part of what got me to today. So, there's no real mistakes um that I would go back and fix. Although, if I could change how I live, I would go back and eat healthier and exercise more. That's what I would say I would do. Uh let's see here. Linda says, thumbs up for the teacher, Bob guys. Thanks, Linda. Lolly says, I once called you Joe, Joe the Canadian. Do you remember? Sorry about that. I have been called a variety of things and most of the time, it makes me laugh. Um I've been called Barb the Canadian, Bob the Canadian, Boob the Canadian, Joe the Canadian. I don't remember uh Lolly so uh no harm no foul we would say in English. Uh I've forgotten so no big deal. Freddie Wolf says, hey Bob or well, hey, hi Bob. I hope you're doing well. I'd like asking you what's the difference between making an error and making a mistake? Thanks a lot for the answer or for answering little fix there. So, mistakes and errors are pretty much the same thing although an error would probably be something more that you do like at school like I made a few errors on my test or um you know I went for a driving test and I made some errors. 
Uh, mistakes, I think, are it's just a more general term um, for things you do that uh, you wish you hadn't. Um, I'm gonna go over here and then back to the chat. Kimmy and Kiwi from Korea. Good morning, Bob. How do you use the expression a slip of the tongue in a sentence? Thank you for your amazing lesson. If I was to say something um that I didn't mean like I would say oh, I was just a slip of the tongue. It means that you you said something that you weren't planning to say and maybe you didn't actually mean it. Um so that's how you would say it. You would say oh, I'm so sorry. I didn't mean to say that. It was just a slip of the tongue. Um a slip of the tongue is when a word comes out that you weren't weren't meaning to say. Sometimes it can be funny when that happens. Key Park. One day, one of my colleagues wore two shoes, not a pair. That's a mistake that happens. Sometimes, people wear two socks that don't match as well. So, I've uh yes, to wear two shoes that don't match. That would be pretty funny. I think it's funny. I I'm not sure if you laughed at your colleague. I probably would have laughed. Uh Lolly Lolly says, merci Bob. Adi the Thai. Hi, teacher Bob. One of the mistakes I don't do was make a mistake with the numbers with the IRS. It made me a headache. From the Chinese proverb, eating poop is better than having a problem with the IRS. So, IRS is the term for the government agency in the US that collects taxes, the Internal Revenue Service, I think. Uh in Canada, it's called CRA, the Canadian Revenue Agency. But every government has a division that collects taxes. So, I find Audie's phrase uh kind of funny. Uh Lancaster Andrew Miller, you are the best Bob. Keep up with the superb content you make. You're welcome. Thanks for the kind words. Freddie Wolf, hey Bob, did you almost go to your work with your slippers? No, I've never done that but here's a mistake I have made. As a teacher, I'm not allowed to wear blue jeans at work but when I do these live streams, right now, I'm wearing blue jeans and when I'm done, I go straight to work. So, twice on a Friday, I've gone to work wearing jeans and then I've had to explain to my boss why I was wearing jeans at school. Teachers are supposed to wear shirts with collars and we're not allowed to wear jeans. Uh Vitor over here says, this is a lesson for people with bad memory, always forgetting something. Yeah, a lot of the mistakes, you're right Vitor, a lot of the mistakes are about forgetting to do something or forgetting something. Um that that's generally most of the mistakes I make are when I forget uh forget something. Uh Min from Vietnam over here. Hello, how are you? I'm good, Min. How are you? Do you ever so, I'm gonna fix this. Do you ever call someone by the wrong name? Yes. I actually um right now, I think it was last semester, I taught two brothers who looked kind of the same and I would sometimes get their names mixed up and I would call them, call one of them by their wrong name. Not a very nice thing to do. Uh from Red Wollen, dear sir, do you take online courses to teach English? So, I don't teach English courses and I don't take courses in order to learn how to teach English. So, I'm trying to figure out which question you're asking. Uh often people ask if I teach English online, if they can sign up for a class. I don't do that. This is the class right now. Um and I've thought about maybe someday going back to school and becoming a certified English language instructor. I'm a certified language teacher but I don't have a specific certificate for teaching English and I think someday I might actually do that. We'll see. Uh back to the chat. We have Raphael. Thanks, teacher. I really appreciate your lessons. Have a good day. Thank you. Uh and then we have Eugene from Etobicoke saying, forgetting to lock the car door. Yes. That's always a problem, right? Like um the battery in my key fob is going dead and so sometimes I push it and I think my car is locked but it's not actually locked. So, Uh Linda says, there's too much to remember in this chaotic life. We inevitably end up forgetting something. Very true. And then Musa says, hi, Bob. I once burned my eggs. That can ha- that can happen. Um and then Lolly is welcoming Musa. Yeah, welcome to uh the membership. Uh welcome to the channel and thank you for becoming a member, Musa. Uh hey, I'm going to turn off members only chat. Once again, I want to thank 
all of my members. Thank you so much for clicking that subscribe button or the join button at some point and for supporting me. I do really, really appreciate it. Uh, it makes uh, creating all of this content a lot easier for me um, when I have your support. So, thank you for that. Um, let's get back to the lesson. I should have a little sip of water. I feel like my voice is sounds a little bit funny. A little bit funny this morning. I need to put more tea in my honey. Um Raphael says, teacher, don't you want to teach French <laughs> teach us French too? I would love to but I think because I'm a native English speaker, I'm more comfortable teaching English on YouTube uh because when I if I was to teach French, I think it would be a lot harder for me and uh, I would be worried that I would make too many mistakes. Uh Musa says, do you still remember when I burned my lips, Bob? No, I do not remember that. Although, a mistake that kids sometimes make in Canada is they stick their tongue on something metal outside in the winter and then their tongue freezes to it. Don't ever do that. Very, very bad thing to do. Okay, let's get back to the lesson. Comparing yourself to others. So, we live in a world where it's very easy to think that other people have a nicer life than you do. It's very easy to compare yourself to others. When you compare yourself to others, you say things like, oh, my brother has a nicer car. My cousin has um uh has more money than me. And when you see everyone putting pictures on Instagram, you see the good parts of their life and you can start to compare yourself to others. This is a mistake. You should always um be happy with yourself. Sometimes when you're learning English, you do this as well. You compare how someone else is doing learning English. Oh, he's learning English faster than me. He knows more words than me. Uh but you should definitely avoid comparing yourself to others. Um it's just yeah, it it will just make you unhappy. Just compare yourself to yourself. That's what I would do. So, I put this one in here to be funny. Uh there's a mistake that people make when they put toilet paper on the toilet paper roll holder. Now, this might not be as funny for you. This might be more of a North American joke but uh there are two ways that you can put a roll of toilet paper on the wall. One way, the toilet paper hangs close to the wall and the other way, the toilet paper hangs far away and people actually argue about this sometimes. For me, the far way with the toilet paper hanging away from the wall, that's the proper way and if you put it this way, you've made a mistake. (laughs) So, I'm not sure um when you go to the bathroom how you hang your toilet paper but certainly in North America, um people sometimes argue about which is the right way and which is a mistake. So, I thought that would be a funny slide to put in here. Leaving food out. So, when you come home from the grocery store, if you buy something like cookies, you can leave the cookies on the counter. If you buy something like meat though, it needs to go into the refrigerator or it needs to go into the freezer or you need to cook it right away. But sometimes when you get home from the grocery store, you're really busy and you might leave food out by accident. When you do this with something like meat, the meat goes bad. That's not a good mistake to make. When you leave food out and the food goes bad, it's a waste of money because now you have to buy it again. Um sometimes we have food meat that's frozen and we'll take it out and put it on the counter to thaw it and then we'll forget about it. It doesn't happen very often but leaving food out is certainly another kind of mistake that people do make. So, this one, you might have a different opinion on than me. Um I'm not sure. I'm not an expert when it comes to exercising. Some people think that not stretching before exercising is a mistake. That you should stretch before you exercise. Other people think no. You should exercise and then you should stretch after you exercise. So, it's kind of like the um the toilet paper thing again. Some people think it's a mistake to not stretch before exercising. Some people think it's a mistake to not stretch after exercising. Saying yes too often. I think we all like to be nice people 
And at work or in our families, people often ask us to do things and sometimes we say yes too often and then we become too busy. So, when you have an opportunity to volunteer to do something, it's nice to say yes but you shouldn't say yes too often. If you say yes too often, you'll be too busy and you will not get enough sleep. Maybe you'll start to eat lots of fast food because you're too busy. So, make sure that you say yes but not too often. It's a mistake to not take care of yourself. Not taking care of yourself means that you don't get enough sleep. You don't eat healthy food. You don't exercise. When you take care of yourself, you make sure that you are healthy both physically and mentally. So, not taking care of yourself is definitely a mistake. Having a simple password. This is not my password. My password is not one, two, three, four but it would be a mistake if you created an email account and if you made your password one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. I don't think they even let you do that anymore. Uh, or maybe your password is password or your password is your last name. Having a simple password is a mistake. Make sure that if you create a password, you create a really, really good password. Uppercase letters, lowercase letters, numbers, symbols, whatever you need to do, make sure your password is secure because having a simple password is a mistake. Drinking too much. Now, I'm talking here about alcoholic beverages. I'm talking about people going out at night and having more than one or two beers or three beers, whatever your limit is. Um, we use the word mistake to talk about things we've done that were a bad idea. So, I might say something like this. Oh, I stayed out late last night. That was a mistake or I drank too much beer last night. That was a mistake. So, we often describe behavior if it affects us negatively the next day, we describe it as a mistake like oh, I drove for eight hours yesterday. That was a mistake. I should have taken a break um or um I went for a run without stretching. That was a mistake. So, uh bad behavior or behavior that's bad for us, we sometimes say that was a mistake. So, again, staying up too late, you can say, oh, I stayed up till midnight last night. That was a mistake. Uh whenever you describe behavior that has a negative effect right now, like I actually went to bed too late two nights ago and that was a mistake because I'm still feeling a little bit tired today. Um this man looks like he is staying up late to do some work. Um probably would have been a better idea to go to bed and get up early maybe but staying up too late can definitely be a mistake. Not creating a study routine. This one, I made this one specifically for all of you who are learning English. I am a firm believer that you should have a routine. You should have a weekly schedule for studying English. Not creating a study routine, I think, makes it a little easier maybe to learn English because you you just do it whenever you feel like but if you really, really, really want to make progress, uh you should create a study routine. So, I think it's a mistake uh to not create a study routine. I think everyone should create study routines if they are learning English. Hey, we're gonna do some questions and uh we're gonna wrap this up. So, stick around. Let me see. There's no more questions. What? Hey, I'll answer some questions from the chat. Uh if you have a question, you can still submit it. Um so, submit it and I would be happy to answer it and let me just scroll through the chat. Um Adi says, usually I like stretching before and after exercise. So, both ends of the exercise. Musa says, April Fools. Hashtag April Fools. Very cool. Uh let me go back here. Um Yaroslav says, can anybody use by trial and error? Generally, it is common in everyday English. Yes. So, sometimes let's say you're putting something together and you have instructions. You would go step by step. But maybe you don't have instructions and then it would just be trial and error. You would just kind of try putting it together and see if it works and see if it doesn't. Um trial and error is basically if I was to teach a class, 
I might learn something by trial and error. That means I try something. I make some notes about what worked and what didn't work. I try something different the next day when I teach the class. So, it's about instead of having clear instructions, you're just trying different ways uh and doing different things to uh learn how to do it. There you go. Uh let's see here. Amethyst in the chat says, Mr. Bob, is it interesting or in it's interesting. Interesting. So, when I say it at full speed, I would say this lesson is interesting. If I was to emphasize it, I would say this lesson is interesting. But the normal way to say it in fast informal speech, interesting. We combine a lot of the words together. Um Vitor in the chat says, only listening and do not and not speaking is a bad habit and a mistake for English learners. I agree. You should be doing some reading, writing, listening and speaking. Do all four. Always a good idea. Uh let's see here. I think I'm gonna wrap this up. Let me see here. There is a question. Let me get that question on the screen from Freddie Le Francais. Hi, Bob. You used the expression a password must be secure. Can we use the word safe instead of secure? Thanks a lot. I fixed the word lust. Lust is like a desire. <laughs> I think you meant must. A password should be secure. It must be secure. Um yes, you could say safe. You could make sure you have a safe password but Secure is probably the better word in that situation for sure. Yeah, definitely use secure. Um cuz safe kind of means like you haven't given anyone like keep your password safe. Like don't tell anyone your password. So, it's a little bit of a different feeling. Hey, that's the end of the lesson on mistakes. I hope I didn't make any mistakes. I actually made a mistake in last week's lesson. I said that PDA was um personal display of affection but it's actually public display of affection. So, even Bob the Canadian when he's teaching sometimes makes mistakes. Anyways, thanks to Todd and Dave for hanging out and keeping the chat civilized or civil. Thanks to all of you who are here. I'm gonna say bye to a few people. Bye to Gaurav and Lemon Cute and Lolly Lolly. Adi the Thai, Musa. Bye to Maze Dance and Jocelyn and Apple the Frog and let me scroll back a bit. Amethyst. Uh Vitor. Let me scroll back some more. Lancaster, Andrew Miller uh and all of you who are here. Thank you so much for watching people. I'm going to wrap this up. Um remember there will be another lesson coming out Tuesday and a not another live lesson next week Friday. So, anyways, thank you so much for watching. I see uh Eugene uh says snow back again. Yep, it's snowing outside here too, Eugene. Uh Lolly says interesting as usual. Uh bye to Adi and Wanda and uh Yaroslav and Sam and Linda. Thanks everybody for hanging out. Uh bye to Freddie Wolf and Key Park as well. Uh and bye to Jamie Vanderwehr. <laughs> bye Jamie. Um have a good day everybody. Uh I'll see you um yeah I'll see you